What we're talking about today is AR-15 furniture. So this is a conversation that's been had uh, throughout the years, uh, especially since AR-15 platforms kind of taken off. But I want to just talk about some considerations that you may want to address when selecting your AR-15 furniture in relation to how your gun is specifically set up with optics, lasers, lights, and all of that sort of stuff in mind. So. Let's start with pistol grips. With pistol grips, there is a ton of different options out there, obviously, but we're gonna talk about four of the most common ones. Uh, so we have the Magpul K2, the BCM Gunfighter, Mod, I don't know, the, this is the more vertical one. The B5 grip, this is also the more vertical one with the Tang, and then you have your classic A2 pistol grip. So there's a lot of things to consider with pistol grips. Uh, but there is specifically one point I would like to address concerning pistol grips, and that is gonna be your grip angle in relation to your length of pull and optic setup on your rifle. So of all of the points that we're gonna talk about today, this is definitely probably the most important one in my opinion. For example, you take an LPVO. Generally, LPVOs have a longer eye relief. So generally, that means your length of pull is gonna be longer if you wanna have good ergonomics on your rifle. So I'm gonna show you an example of that. We have this 13.9 setup. This is set up for tactical games, by the way. It's kind of why it's all stripped. But we have a Tango 6T setup on it, and the eye relief on this guy is extremely, extremely long, even for LPVOs. So, with, what that means is, is, in order for me to place this gun properly, this is about how far away I need to be from the optic. So, if I had a more vertical grip angle, uh, that's just going to put my wrist at a an, kind of an awkward angle, and therefore my trigger pull and all that stuff is going to be just a little bit off. Now, is it the end of the world? No, if it's slightly off, we'll talk about that at the end. But this is just one thing to consider, especially with grip angle in relation to your optic. On the opposite end of the spectrum are optics that have very really short eye release, and generally uh, pistol grips like the K2 or your B5 are gonna be um, a better solution. So what we have here is the PSA Jackal. Now, you guys are all familiar with this gun, and I am very familiar with it as well. But the ACOG has a very short eye relief, and we're gonna need a little bit shorter of a length of pull just to get that proper eye relief on the ACOG so I'm not fishing around for the optic, or for, for that perfect sight picture. Now, uh, with the Jackal, obviously we have a, a stock that we can't really change out, so length of pull is just nice and short and we have that vertical grip angle going on here just to accommodate, again, that eye relief on the ACOG. One more thing to consider about length of pull. Now, you hear a lot of people talk about your length of pull should essentially be the length of your forearm, so setting your stock kind of in here so when you have a 90 degree angle your stock goes in your elbow and then that's your proper length of pull. I'm totally against that. Not totally but mostly against it. I think it could vary just a little bit again because of your grip angle. So just be mindful of that. If your length of pull happens to be one or two clicks shorter than your elbow because you have a more vertical grip angle you're gonna be fine. I would say if you have a extremely short length of pull with this this angle or even a vertical that's not gonna be ideal because um, Again, a little bit longer is going to give you a little bit better recoil control. At the same time, if you have a, a B5 grip, you know, that's super vertical, and you extend this guy all the way out, and it's longer than your arm, um, not going to be the most ideal setup. Now, the most common grip that we have in the armory, this is Lucas's favorite, uh, is the BCM Gunfighter. So this grip is definitely more of a vertical angle. So if we compare it to, let's compare it to the B5. I'm trying to hold these level. You can see it's very, very similar, but really the difference is with this grip is the palm tang or whatever you want to call this, or palm swell, is a little bit uh, more angled on this. So this is actually kind of in between that super vertical, like the B5 and the K2, and uh, your standard A2 grip. So if you if you have a lower that you're changing optics around on or just changing uppers around on, the BCM is just kind of that good in between grip that's gonna work well for a lot of different optic setups. So there's one more thing to talk about with pistol grips and that is trigger guard. So I'm gonna show you an example and we're gonna go back to this Tactical Games gun real quick. And that is this Magpul trigger guard. So we have this with the A2 grip that's you know slightly modified to be a little bit better. Um, but when you have a grip that doesn't have this little plastic piece like the BCM that hangs over the trigger guard, for example, the B5, A2, Magpul, actually the majority of grips don't, and you have a mil spec trigger guard, you're gonna get a little hot spot going on here. And even if you don't have a mil spec and you have general you know, like Magpuls or BCM trigger guards, that slightly enhanced one, you can still get a little bit of a hot spot here. So what I would like to mention here is the really the only difference between trigger guards out there is one, you're gonna get trigger guards that will be a little more flush on the low receiver so you don't get that hot spot. And the other point is you get trigger guards that are gonna vary in size to, in, to increase the, the space um, and 
your fire control area. So if you're wearing gloves really often or you just have bigger hands, just something to consider. Mil specs are gonna definitely be a little bit tighter, uh, a little bit tighter of space. All right, so we talked about pistol grips and their relation to mainly length of pull and eye relief on your optic. Now let's talk about foregrip options. So again, tons of them out there, tons of options, but we're just, again, we're gonna address some of the more, more common ones. We have the Magpul angled grip. This is the uh, one of the original ones actually. Emissary handbrake, so this is not a vertical foregrip, this is a handbrake, so legal in AR pistols, which is really cool. BCM CAG grip, so kinesthetic angled grip. This is really actually very similar to this. If you look at it, it's actually basically the same thing, just a lot smaller. We have a BCM vertical foregrip, and then you have the other option of just rail cover. So lots of different options of rail cover, especially dependent on the type of rail you have. So the main thing to consider here when selecting your vertical foregrip, handbrake, or you know, rail covers, whatever you wanna call it, is how often are you shooting off barricades? What type of barricades are you shooting off of? And what is your laser light activation setup look like? So let's uh, show an example. So one example we have here is this Mark 18. This is kind of a, a unique laser setup. It's just a rear mounted laser on a riser. So you can put your thumb over top, nothing fancy going on here. But the main point here is that the buttons are on top of the rail. So uh, this means I don't necessarily need a grip of any kind. And uh, this is, you know, a lot of this is personal preference, guys. So in my personal preference, I don't need a vertical foregrip. I'm actually just gonna go with rail covers because all of my activation is just on top. So I'm squeezing down. That's the main point here. So I'm squeezing down. I'm creating counter pressure with the palm of my hand. Now, another example is, this is actually my personal rifle, um, is a setup quite like this. So I have a B. Myers Mall and a flashlight with a clicky cap. So this is actually why I have a vertical foregrip. So I need to be able to create some counter pressure with the light in the gun so my hand doesn't get super fatigued. If you've ever done a shooting package or shot at night for quite a while, you're gonna notice, or even just shoot lasers for quite a while, you're gonna notice quite a bit of fatigue on your hand from just activating a momentary button um, frequently. So uh, what really helps with that is, is providing a solution on your gun that helps you give that counter pressure. So in this example, because I have a click cap, the lights, the light activation is not on top of the gun, it's on to the side. The foregrip gives me that counter pressure and I can activate the light extremely easy. Now, also, because I have buttons on top and on the side, this handbrake allows me to rotate my hand back, and this is just a reference point for my hand to be able to activate the buttons for the laser. So that's the other point to vertical foregrips that are pretty nice is you have that reference point. Now, that's probably definitely the least um, important aspect of them, but you know it's definitely something to consider. So in regards to having that counter pressure to your light, what a setup that is incorrectly set up would look like is a click cap without a vertical foregrip. So if you're running around shooting, activating your light quite a bit, that's gonna get extremely fatiguing with your hand having to constantly push forward with nothing to grip onto um, on the gun. Now you can add grip panels and stuff like that. That'll give you a little bit of texture, a little bit something to grip onto, but it's not gonna be nearly as good as having something like this handbrake or a vertical foregrip that you can, again, push and pull off of uh, to activate your light and or laser. So this idea st applies to not only lights, but again, lasers like the D-Ball D2 that has a button on the back. Another point to consider is the girth or thickness of your rail in relation to what kind of optic and laser light setup you have here. So we have the Jackal again. This gun is a little bit chonkier, it's a little bit thicker, so that's why I went with the BCM uh, CAG grip on here. So I would, because of the activation setup I got going on here, uh, I have momentary only switch. Well, this can be constant only if I want it to be, but say I had a momentary only switch here, and I wanted to have that constant option, like the tail cap I got going on here, I'm gonna need, again, that reference point slash uh, counter pressure option of a grip. And also with this gun, because it has this charging handle that likes to bounce and kind of bite you a little bit, um, I definitely want something for my hand to reference so I don't bump into that charging handle. So just another consideration is definitely the girth of the rail. Now lastly, like I said, is the type of barricades you're shooting off of, if you're shooting off barricades at all. Now, if you're shooting off of a lot of unconventional type barricades, so you're doing, I don't know, PRS shooting, for example, obviously none of these are bolt guns, precision guns, but if you have an AR setup around that, uh, unconventional barricades are definitely gonna be more favorable towards no grip whatsoever because you may be shooting off hoods or rocks or barrels, just very odd things. But if you're shooting off of standard barricades, for example, this table, a windowsill or anything like that, any grip at all is fantastic because you can just drive the gun into it and you have a, a point on the gun that you can just kind of dig into. So the last piece of furniture we're going to talk about is stock selection. Now, this, this piece of furniture is definitely going to be majority of personal preference. And a lot of that preference is going to be around how they look and uh, kind of how the, that perceived feel is. 
So in my personal selection, I really like BCM stocks. I think they're very snug on majority of buffer tubes. And I just kind of like, again, the way they look. And we'll talk about angle of butt pad, QD points and stuff like that. But again, personal preference is definitely the main contributing factor to stocks. Now there is one thing that I would like to mention in regarding stocks, two stocks, and that is optic height. So for example, we have this ACOG with a P2 on top. So ACOG, absolute co-witness height. So stock selection, not that big a deal there. But with the P2 on top, uh, there is something to consider. So with this being up so high, I would generally want a stock that's a little bit fatter. Now, generally people want to see fatter stocks when they're shooting like precision guns, they can just get a little bit more firm of a cheek wall on the gun. And that's obviously true, I'm not gonna negate that whatsoever, but I also just wanna bring up the point that having a little bit fatter of a cheek weld like this uh, B5 SOT mod stock actually gives you something to put your face on, gives you a little bit more surface area when you have a very tall optic like this three inch high P2, for example. So something to consider if you're one of those guys that runs uh, risers on your red dots for night vision shooting, which you really don't need to do. I shoot my standard EOTech passively all the time, absolute coat witness, you just need proper stock placement. Um, but if you're, if you're into the, that, that sort of thing, uh, consider a fatter stock because it will definitely help you just get a little more surface area with your face on the gun um, in relation to the optic. So a couple example stocks that we have here, again, tons of options out there. We're just gonna talk about some of the more common ones. So we have the BCM. Uh, these are a little bit more difficult to get on and off because you need like an Allen key or something to get them on and off, but they are very snug to buffer tubes. Now these have kind of a locking mechanism with the QDs, as when the QDs interface on the stock, they don't move. So if you're primarily mounting your sling to your stock, uh, the, B the BCM is gonna be a good option. Standard angled, a uh, butt pad angle, so majority stocks are like this, but some are different, we'll talk about that. Next we have the Magpul CTR, very, very common stock. It's really well priced, um, super simple. Now the cool thing about this is when you put it on your buffer tube, it has a lock down, so it prevents majority of the wobble. So um, this is definitely one of my favorites because that this stock is also very modular. So you have some interface points here, these holes through here, through the bottom, and this allows you to add cheek risers, uh, bag, bag rests, all sorts of things. So if you're looking for a stock that is for like a SPR carbine or something like that, this stock is a really good option because again, you can add cheek welds, you can add bag stuff. You can kind of do a lot of different things with this. Now this is definitely one of the most common ones out there. This is the SOT Mod B5 stock. So this is the stock that I was issued that's issued to majority of SOCOM still. And what you're gonna notice that's different about this is the flat uh, butt pad. I hate it, um, I despise it. I don't know why anyone likes it. I mean, you can get used to it over time, but I just don't understand why it's flat, to be honest. There's probably a good reason for it. I just never knew it. Don't like it, uh, but they do look cool. So again, personal preference. If you uh, prefer looks, this might be the stock for you. Now, lastly, we have fixed stocks. Now this fixed stock's actually missing the butt pad, but again, this is definitely focused around guns that are more precision-ish. And, uh, or you just have a gun, you know your length of pull, you just have it set and it's generally this length. You get the stock, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about an adjustable stock. But um, so just one thing to consider, these stocks generally come with a lot of adjustment for your butt pad, angling the butt pad, as well as going in and out, cheek risers and uh, that sort of thing. So just another option for stocks. So like I said, multiple times in the video, tons of options out there for furniture, uh, but I just want to go over my favorite uh, furniture setup and why. So it's exactly this. I got BCM stock, Magpul K2 grip, and then emissary handbrakes. Now I have two guns set up exactly like this. This is an 11.5 SBR, and then I have a 14.5 penned. And uh, the furniture doesn't change. I have the same exact grip. The only difference in the stock is I have the fatter um, BCM stock because I have an ACOG with a top mounted T2 on it. And then the handbrake, I just have Emissary's smaller handbrake on it. And uh, I also have the Ergo rail covers for the Picatinny. They're only on there not because my hands are soft and I don't like Picatinny, but because these rails get hot and they dissipate heat extremely well. So, and they, uh, this is a DDM4 rail. This is a very, very thin quad rail, super based. But even with the rail covers, the rail is still very thin, which I really, really like. So I just wanted to show an example of my favorite furniture setup and, and kind of why. Again, the furniture is selected around the optics, the way the laser and lights are set up on both guns. So on the other gun, there's a RAID and a turbo set up on it. And uh, again, the handbrake there is for not only for the light and laser setup, but also for shooting off of barricades. And I shoot more off of traditional barricades rather than untraditional like hoods of cars and rocks and that sort of thing. Again, tons of options out there, guys. Um, now, all of this will improve your experience when shooting the gun. It definitely makes the gun better to feel, all of that sort of thing. But what it does not improve is your shooting ability. So spend more time and effort into focusing on your training rather than how your gun is set up. 
and uh, get out there and training it better. So until next time, guys, Brandon at T-Rex.